This video is going to walk you through uh, setting up and running a piece by simulation of this circuit number one. This circuit is uh, a, uh, a circuit that we want to study in the time domain based on uh, what we have been asked to answer regarding this circuit. Uh, the instructions for this lab tell us that uh, this circuit has a 70 volt source, has a 5k, 2k, and 1 millifarad capacitor, and there's an initial voltage on the capacitor of 0 volts. And we are to look at some things in time. So at time 0, find the current flowing through C1, find the final voltage across C1 is such and such, and then uh, determine the voltage across the or measure the voltage across the capacitor at one time constant and two time constants. So we need to run a time domain simulation. So let me double check the values here. We have R2 is 5k. So that's this guy here. Right. Okay. So I'm going to open up PSPICE AD. Uh, we'll take a blank screen. We'll start a new, new one from scratch here. So file, new, text, file. And I would save this immediately. So I'm going to go up and just put this all in uh, video here. Okay, circuit one. Oops, I meant to save that with a .cir. Let me try that again. .cir, that's important. Now you want to give it a name, so we'll say uh, circuit, uh, circuit one.cir and it's uh, circuit number one, it's an RRC. Okay, so now let's enter the netlist. We have a voltage source V1 going from node one to node zero, and it is 70 volts. We have an R1 that's going from node one to node two, and it is one kilo ohm. An R2 going from two to zero, it is 5k, and lastly C1 going from 2 to 0, it is a 1 millifarad, I believe, and it had an initial condition of 0 volts, so we enter that as an IC equal 0 volts. You can give an initial condition to any energy storage element, so that would be a capacitor or an inductor. We then want to run a set up to run a transient simulation, so it's going to be a dot TRN. And if you forget the syntax on that, look up the or Google the PSPCref.pdf document. This is from an older version of PSPICE, but it's um, you know the syntax doesn't change, so this is still valid, and I like the layout for this one. So we go to commands because transient is a command, and then tran here, and we find that. Uh, when we call up the transient analysis, the first argument is the print step value, then the final time value, then optionally a no print value and a ceiling step value. So the print step is if you have a dot print statement, which we don't, um, it'd be a dot print statement uh, anywhere in here, and that would uh, result in values being printed out to the dot out file. So. Uh, the only requirement here, if you're not using it, is uh, using the print statement, is that you need to have a print step that is less than the um, the final time. So this, we got to think about how long we want to run this simulation. Um, let's go back and look at the circuit for a minute. The circuit here has a time constant. Unfortunately, there's two R's, so we may not be sure initially what time constant or what resistance to use. However, if you draw a line vertically separating R2 and C1 and look to the left and say, ask the question, what does C1 see when it looks to the left? And you recall our network reductions uh, section of the course where we talked about Thevenin and Norton equivalents. Uh, what we want to do is Thevenize that circuit to the left. And then the time constant will be C1 times the Thevenin resistance. So. You find the Thevenin resistance in this case, right, by turning off the independent sources. 
and combining the resistors. Uh, this will result in a Thevenin resistance of R1 times or paralleled with R2. So you can run the math on that. You've got the value of 5K and 2K and then a 1 millifarad capacitor. So you can run the, uh, the numbers for that. You can also try just kind of um, brute force, but I recommend that you don't do that. I'm just going to throw out a number here. Let's say um, uh, 100 milliseconds. The next um, quantity to specify is the no print value. So if you don't want to save data right from the beginning, you can put something other than zero. I do want to save from the beginning. And then lastly is the time step, or the maximum uh, simulation step size. I'll leave that blank for now. We need to do dot probe in order to make sure that the data is saved. Um, the dot dat file data is saved and it'll open probe automatically. So we'll save this. Notice, remember here, this will get uh, people initially. The simulation is not actually loaded yet. I just opened a text file. So now I have to go File, Open Simulation. I need to select the option of .cir. And I see it now, so I click Circuit 1 CIR. And now I see it loaded, so I'm good to go. You can push the green button here, or you can go Simulate run and you've got the results so let's uh, what I'm interested in is the current and the voltage so voltage is V of 2 Ooh, I haven't I'm not running that long enough am I so let's go back and run this for quite a bit longer still not long enough uh, I don't like doing this just trial and error all right, we'll stop there. And then I want to plot the current. I know the current is going to be a lot smaller than the voltage, so I'm going to go ahead and add a second axis, add a y axis, and then I'm going to add uh, I of um, C1. Is that what I was asked for? Uh, what were we asked for? Uh, the current through the capacitor, yes. Okay, so there we go. So now you can just ask, answer those questions. We've got the cursor. You turn the cursor on, attach it to IC1, move it up to time zero, and what do we have here? Um, that's very interesting. If I zoom in here, just take a look. Of course, it never works out like it's supposed to here, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, there we go. If I zoom way in, so I was getting this value of zero, but it's because of the time step. Um, and I would go back and run this, put a time step of... Um, say 0 0.1 milliseconds run that again see if we get a better result there yeah it still goes to zero right at time zero so I would just go a little bit um, greater than time zero um, and we see 70 milliseconds unfortunately it's reporting zero at time zero but that's not possible and the reason I'll tell you why it's not possible if you look at this circuit the voltage initially across the capacitor is zero, that's V2. So if the voltage here is zero, then all of the voltage of V1 is across R1. So 70 volts across a 1K is 70 milliamps. There has to be 70 milliamps flowing here. And uh, the question is, where does it flow? Through R2 or C1? Well, if there's zero volts across R2, then no current flows through R2. All of it goes through C1. So it has to be 70 milliamps at time zero. Okay, so I'll stop there. That's circuit one, and we'll pick it up with circuit two.